house rules. You may not you may not have it as a culture, but at that specific instance, that one hour session, be prepared to create a slide enumerating what are the house rules or guidelines for all the participants. What are the house rules that we can consider? Number one, you can tell them this session is two hours. This session is three hours. You can also tell them, will there be a break? If it's a three hour session, is there gonna be a break on the first hour, on the second hour? Number three, prompt them immediately. Will there be a Q and A? This is good because it's prompting people. If you have immediate question, you can share that question at the end of the meeting so that it doesn't disturb others. Also, how can people interact? Is there a chat box? Can I turn my microphone on? Is there a Q&A, et cetera? Could you give me an exclamation mark if you saw this a while ago in my slides? And if you have been attending my session since March 2020, you should know by now that it's one of my mandatory slides that I have a house rule. Right? Do you see that? A while ago, if, you, if you're watching this webinar from the very start, you may notice that I have that slide that says, number one, keep on typing in the chat box. Number two, start typing your answers if there is a poll. Number three, keep your questions if you have questions later on. Right? So that's an example of a basic house rule. Number four, you can also, or number five, you can also ask, Will there be soft copies of the handouts? I love saying this from the very start. Why? It preempts a lot of participants to panic and think that they have to screenshot every slide that they see. If you tell them that there are going to be soft copies, it puts them at ease. It makes them more relaxed because they know that they will not forget or they will not lose all the information because someone is going to give them a set of handouts. They will be focusing their attention more to you rather than copying and making notes. And finally, my other favorite, sometimes it also matters to give people time to prepare for a photo op. So when I do my sessions, for example, on my Booster Confidence Premium webinar, I tell them, ladies and gentlemen, please prepare. We're gonna have a photo op after the second hour. It helps people prepare how they look, right? So it's gonna help people wear proper clothing. It's gonna help people transfer to a proper place in their apartment or in their house that has good background. In this way, more people will likely be able to attend your photo op. One of my experiences is, my typical experience is people don't turn on their video, not because they don't want or because they're just bored not to participate. It's because they don't think they are presentable enough. So if you tell them that there's going to be a photo op, they are going to prepare for it. Okay. Right? Simple things such as combing their hair, right? Putting on a nicer shirt and all these things. Okay. Um, checking at the chat box now and putting out this comment from Yang Lucencio says, agree to inform ahead regarding handouts. I am a fan of these screenshotting for my reference. That's true. So, I mean, I also listen to webinars. So if I don't know if there's a handout, I'll be panicking. I'll keep on screenshotting everything because I want to capture everything that I am listening to. Okay? Right? So here's one more example. And here is another house rule that I often do. From my experience, people always listen when they find out that there is going to be a test or what I call as knowledge check. Knowledge check sounds better than test or assessment. It doesn't sound as intimidating. So here's an example of a slide. At the beginning of my presentation, I will share, ladies and gents, please take note that there's going to be a knowledge check after the session. Please scan the QR code. I will show this again at the end of the session. So I don't need to tell them that they have to be attentive, but they get the point, right? Because a lot of people, you know, it's the healthy amount of stress that you want to put you don't need to say this at the last part. Please, if you if you can, say this at the very beginning because they have to set the expectations. You have to listen. You have to be attentive. You have to stop playing Mobile Legends while listening to the webinar because if you miss out on important information, you might not be able to answer correctly the knowledge check. Okay? All good? My point is this. Visualize your participants and put yourselves into their shoes. 
if I'm watching a webinar, I want to have a table of contents of what's going to happen in the webinar. So for example, if you tell me that there's going to be a lecture for 30 minutes, there's gonna be a raffle or contest at the first hour, there's going to be a break on the third hour, and then there's going to be a QA. and a I'm able to design and prepare myself for the rest of that two hours and three hours. So I can also prepare what part should I be more attentive? Ideally, you should be attentive at all times, but which parts should I be given focus? At which part is it okay to go to the washroom? Which part is it okay to start getting my second cup of coffee because I've finished it already, right? So the table of contents allow people to design their lives according to your session's schedule, right? So I like this response again from Jennifer. It could motivate the audience to become attentive and participative because what are we after? What are we after, can someone type? We're after predictability, right? You want your audience to be able to predict what's going to happen next. When people get to predict, they are more at ease. They feel more relaxed. People generally, psychologically, don't like surprises. Surprises make us feel anxious. So make them feel that everything that's going to happen next is predictable.